Hello, welcome to this 10-minute tutorial for research. My name is Vanessa Hernandez and I am a Senior Solutions Architect at AWS in Mexico City. Today, you are going to take a look at the Amazon Bracket Management Console. So, let's get started. There you have the main view of our console in AWS. If you have an AWS account and you get into it, this is the first page you will see. So how you would navigate into the Bracket Management Console? Well, you will have different options. First of all, if Bracket starts to be one of the services that you access recently, you will find it here in the recently visited uh, part, as you can see here, mine. Or you can also navigate to it from services, where you will find this Quantum Technologies option, and there you will find Amazon Bracket. Or you can just go directly into it here if you type it, the name in our search bar. And just to clarify, it is bracket just with a K because just as a curious note, it refers to the bracket or direct notation that is used to uh, express in a written form uh, the qubits, right? So, uh, well, this is what you will see when you navigate to the uh, bracket management console. This view with different tiles that represent each of the quantum machines that you will be able to access through Bracket. So one of the advantages of Amazon Bracket is it will provide you a single control pane to access different uh, QPUs, different architectures of quantum processors. And currently we have available D-Wave, IMQ, or Rigetti which uh, can be useful for different use cases, but you will be able to experiment in all of them from a single platform through Amazon Bracket in, on the AWS Cloud. So let's go into the tiles so you can see some of the details that you will find there for each of the QPUs. I will navigate first into IonQ, and I want to show you um, a couple of relevant uh, pieces of information. The first one is this device ARN or Amazon resource name, which is the one you will be using in your code to indicate the QPU, the particular um, processor in which you want to execute your circuit. And I will go into much detail there where, where I, when I show you a, a piece of code, just as a sample, uh, where you will place this ARN. Then you will also find that each QPU is available from a different region in the AWS cloud. And this is relevant because when you go into the task section to check the results of the execution of your, your circuit, it is important that you are in the right region to check for those tasks. I will show you that later. The other uh, important piece of information is the availability of each QPU, because each one of them is available available at a different time on different weekdays. So you will have to check here that uh, uh, what is the window where uh, those processors are actually available. It, it doesn't matter if you send your circuit to one of those when they are not available because it will go into a queue. But it is important that you know that it will be attended uh, just during the, the availability window. And you will find also for each uh, processor, some information regarding its topology and some other metrics that might be useful um, when you configure your circuit or, or when you create your code. That will depend on the architecture of each of the processors. But more or less, this is the type of information that you will find in each of the tiles here when you check the different devices. Then I will show you this notebooks option. It turns out that you can uh, directly code in your own computer if you install locally the bracket SDK. But you also can use managed Jupyter notebooks on the AWS cloud to code and run your, your circuits. So uh, in this option is where you will find the um, link to navigate to it. I mean, you can actually launch your managed notebook from, from here, but, but once you have it, um, provisioned, you will be able to access it from the link here. And um, I will show you that uh, it, you will have available some set of predefined bracket examples, uh, which are really useful if you're just starting your journey into learning about Amazon Bracket, because you will find there some code that will 
help you to understand how to program your quantum circuits and how to use the Amazon Bracket SDK. So I will get into the Getting Started folder to show you just briefly some of the uh, examples. I will not go into the detail of the code, but I want to show you some parts of um, these notebooks, of this uh, code that is based on the Bracket SDK, uh, which is a, a, a Python uh, library. So um, some uh, relevant information. Well, here, just this, for example, is a Bell circuit, which is an entangled state between uh, two qubits. And, and uh, I invite you to go into deeper detail uh, and separately to know more about this kind of circuits. But the important part here is this one, for example, would be uh, executed in a local simulator. And again, this can be your own machine if you're using the local SDK or the machine where the Jupyter notebook is running. So it is using this line to send the circuit to the actual QPUs or to the managed simulators. And I will show you that in the other examples that I have here. For example, if I go into this one, uh, where we are running uh, a circuit on uh, the managed simulators, you will see that we have here also a line here in the Managed Simulators section that refers to the device. And then there you will see the ARN of the device, which is the Amazon resource name that I was referring to before. And you just have to specify here to let uh, bracket where you want your circuit to be executed. Uh, another important thing is when you uh, use the local simulator, uh, the results will be shown to you uh, immediately. But if you're using the managed uh, simulators or um, the actual QPUs, your results will be stored in a default S3 bucket. You can also specify a different bucket if you don't want to use the default to place your results. And that will be done uh, through a couple of lines like you are seeing here. And I will show you how you can navigate to the bucket from the uh, bracket console to check your, the results of your tasks. So I have executed some tasks before, and I will show you how you can check the results of them here from the management console. You just need to navigate to the tasks option, and then you will see all the tasks that you have been executing before here with a different status. If, if they are queued, if they are being executed, if they are already completed. Here I have some completed tasks. This one was sent to an ion Q, uh, QPU. But I will show you that I also sent some tasks to a Rigetti QPU, and that one is associated to a different AWS region. So in, in order to see that one, I will need to navigate to Northern California here. And, uh, okay, let's just wait for a few seconds. And, and then it, it will show me uh, all the tasks that I have sent to the Rigetti QPU before. So if I want to check the results of this task, I will just go into the detail here and navigate here to the link to the S3 bucket where the results are placed. If I click here, open link in a new tab, I will go into S3 directly from the um, bracket console, and then I will find a JSON file with the results of the execution of my circuit. And it's as simple as that to access the results of your tasks. And well, finally, uh, I skipped this option, which is the jobs option. And uh, we recently released a capability in Amazon Bracket um, that is called hybrid jobs, where you can combine classical CPUs with QPUs in a single algorithm. So you will be able to execute different parts of your algorithm in uh, classical machines or in quantum machines. And you can send that kind of jobs from this um, option in the, in the uh, management console. And Bracket will be in charge of everything behind the scenes. So you won't have to provision the uh, classical virtual machine to execute that part of your algorithm or um, uh, checking, for example, the, the, the creating the tasks manually for the QPUs, because all of that will be done behind the scenes by bracket. 
if you specify your algorithm and your code here. So I won't go into the detail of that because you will be able to check that in a different video, but this is the part of the management console when you, where you will be able to access uh, that new feature. So this was our journey in the Amazon Bracket Management Console. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you continue learning about quantum computing at AWS. Thank you very much.